Hi, I'm Eliza, and I have another read aloud for you today. Um, this book is called Stay, and it's by Bobby Pyron. Um, this is another book that you're going to find on Hoopla. So I'm going to read the first few chapters to you. They're real short chapters. Um, and if you really like it, you can go um, using your library card, go to Hoopla, and you can check out an ebook version to read or an audiobook um, version to listen to. Um, and this book is pretty neat. It's about a little girl whose family has just become homeless and, and a dog. Who needs a friend. So the um, chapters go back and forth between the girl's perspective and the dog's perspective. Um, it's all about friendship and community and trust and helping. It's, it's, it's a little bit sad but it's a really good book. All right so stay. All right chapter one Piper. I rest my head against the cold window of the countrywide bus watching the world go by. The full moon lights up empty fields. Corn stalks and stubble throw long shadows across the ground. It's pretty and kind of mysterious too. To tell you the truth, I think I'm the only person on the entire bus who's awake. Well, except for the driver, but I can't see her anyway. Her name tag said Doreen. She seems nice. Across the aisle, my little brother Dylan sleeps with his head in Mama's lap. His red superhero cape is spread across his body. It's just an old red blanket, so he won't, he won't give up without pitching a royal fit. So we pretend it gives him superpowers, especially when his asthma is bad. I can just see the tips of his sneakers peeking out from under the blanket. He has his best friend, Ted, the stuffed shark, tucked under his chin. I gaze back out the window at the headlights of cars ticking by at the warm yellow porch lights glowing outside of houses in the neighborhoods we pass, like our old neighborhood and our little house. Thinking of home reminds me of the things in the backpack at my feet. Inside, along with my firefly girl sash, a jacket and some other stuff is my favorite book, My Side of the Mountain. I could take it out and read it again, but if I turn on the overhead light, it'll wake Daddy up. Daddy snores lightly, almost like a purr, in the seat beside me. I lean my head against his arm and feel warm skin through the thin flannel shirt. I can smell his familiar scent of cigarettes and juicy fruit gum. And if I rub my nose just a little deeper into the soft flannel, I swear I can smell the salty sea air of home. I close my eyes. The bus rocks so, so gently as it speeds through the night, past farms and fields and towns, houses and neighbourhoods, everyone sleeping snug as bugs in their beds. Since I can't read my book, I decide to run my favourite imaginary movie in my head. I'm not the world's best sleeper, especially when I worry, which is pretty much most of the time, so when I can't sleep, I make up movies. My favourite is Trudeau Family Wins Big. In it, we win the lottery and have all the things we've, never, we've ever wanted. A house on the water and a big boat for Daddy, a fenced-in yard with a dog for me, college for Mama, and a brand new bicycle for Dylan. And best of all, no worries about paying bills. I smile just a tiny bit. My mind latches onto the rhythm of the rocking bus. It whispers in time, over and over, maybe, maybe, maybe. So that's the end of the first chapter, and then the second chapter... But it's that short. It's, it's, this is the, from the little dog's perspective. Chapter 2. Baby and Jewel. A small brown dog listens to the beat of his world in the chest of a woman named Jewel. He watches a, racco a raccoon waddle across the grass in the bright moonlight. Baby squirms with curiosity. Is it doggish? Is it catish? Oh, so many things to smell, to see, to make friends with. Jewel stirs. Baby settles against her chest. Quiet. A good, good dog. He tucks his head beneath her chin. Jewel's scent fills every inch of the little dog with deep joy. Baby and Jewel, a pack of two, warm and safe together. Chapter 3. Somewhere. Time to wake up, Piper. I sit up and blink at the sunlight filling the bus. Outside, the windows are tall 
Outside the windows are tall, tall buildings, rushing traffic, trash pushed up against the sidewalk curbs by the wind. What happened to the moonlit fields, the tidy neighborhoods? Daddy lifted, lifts his Atlanta Braves cap from his head and runs his fingers through his hair. Sleep okay, little chicken? He asks around a yawn. I yawn too. I guess the moon was awful bright. Everybody's waking up now. They stand and begin ba gathering their bags, boxes, backpacks and suitcases from under seats and overhead racks. Mama gives me a tired smile as she shifts Dylan from one arm to the other. Morning, sweetheart. She stretches and tries to smooth her shirt. Her hand is coming loose from its... Sorry, her hair is coming loose from its braid. Your hair's a mess, Mama, I say. Let me fix it. I undo her braid, smooth down her springy hair as best I can, and rebraid it nice and tight. Thanks, honey, she says. She scoops Dylan up off the seat and into her arms. Dylan can sleep through anything. Once he slept through a tornado that hit near our street. Never made a sound. Me, I'm not much of a sleeper. I'm like Daddy that way. Dylan's eyes open. I watch as he slowly comes back to the world. His eyes are the same deep, deep sea blue as Mama's. Where are we? He asks in his croaky little voice. I look back out the windows. Nothing looks familiar. Nothing looks like anywhere we've been. And we've been a lot of places over the past few months. I reach out and push the hair out of, my, out of his eyes. His face is hot and damp. For just a second, I let my fingers rest against his cheek. Somewhere, I answer. We're somewhere. Over the rainbow? Dylan asks. Me and Dylan used to watch The Wizard of Oz every Easter when it came on TV. And we can sing every song. I smile and click my red high-top tennis shoes three times. Maybe. Mama hands me Dylan's Spongebob backpack, his red superhero cape, and Ted the shark. I sling my backpack over one shoulder and Dylan's over the other. We step off the bus. Mama sets Dylan on the ground while she checks to make sure we have everything. Two suitcases, one duffel bag. I look up, I look around and up. I've never seen so many people and so many tall buildings. Even when we stayed with Mama's cousin in Baton Rouge, it wasn't like this. Look, Piper! Dylan grabs my hand and clutches it hard. There, off in the distance, are mountains so high, they look like they've surely punched a hole right through the sky and into heaven. I feel myself light up inside. Ever since I read My Side of the Mountain, I've wanted to see the mountains. Be on a mountain. Like Sam, like Sam Gribley. I squeeze his hand, just like Dorothy when she first sees Munchkinland. I say, Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Where are they, do you think? Big city near some mountains? Hmm. Chapter 4, A New Day. Remember, this is back to, back to a baby's perspective. Oh, Lord, let me get these old bones moving one more day. Jewel says this each and every morning as she stretches her legs, arms, fingers, back. Baby wags his bit of a tail and pulls back his lips in a toothy smile. As he does every morning, a frisky breeze skitters across the grass, bringing delicious scents to baby's nose. The sweet smell of rotting leaves the bitter sm smell of acorns, the musky smell of squirrels. Squirrels! Baby runs tight circles, around and around and around Jewel, yipping with delight. A brand new day to see old friends, to make new ones. A new day to explore the city with Jewel, always with Jewel. What could be better? Baby does not understand why, sometimes, the smell of sadness and confusion spools from Jewel, like now. Baby twirls and spins on back legs. Jewel laughs. She lifts Baby and kisses the white patch on the top of his head, a patch shaped like a snowflake. Look, Baby, Jewel says. Just look at the world. And Baby does. Trees, swings, picnic tables, a pond, wet leaves carpeting the ground, and in the distance, tall buildings. And farther still, mountains. 
Baby licks Jules' chin and squirrels, squirms in her arms. Let's go. Chapter 5. Signs. Outside the bus station, the wind is cold. It seems like the farther we've, tra we've traveled from home, the colder it is. This just doesn't make any sense. Daddy looks at a piece of paper in his hand, and then up at the street sign, then back at the paper. 386 west, 200 south. He reads out loud. He shakes his head. What the heck kind of address is that? I'm cold, Dylan whimpers. Mama wraps Dylan's red blanket tight around his shoulders and strains to pick him up. Mama's kind of small, so it's not easy for her to lift him anymore. I pull my denim jacket out of my pack. You're not a little baby, you know, I snap at Dylan. Right away, I feel bad. Dylan pops his thumb into his mouth and looks at the mountains. Mama frowns. I seem to remember, young lady, you asking to be held when you were five. I turn away to pull on my jacket. I don't want her to see me try to swallow past the lump in my throat. I don't want her to know that even though I'm almost 12 now, I'd give anything to climb right into her lap or daddy's. I quickly touch my firefly girl's sash at the bottom of my pack for comfort, then zip it up. Doreen, the bus driver lady, comes over to daddy, still puzzling at the paper. Can I help you? She asks. She's almost as tall as daddy, which is saying something. Daddy holds out the paper to her. This is the address I have for where we're going, but I can't make sense of it. Doreen studies the address, then looks over at Mama holding Dylan. I see, she says. She clears her throat. You're going two blocks that way north, she points, and then you'll turn west, left, and go three blocks. You'll see the sign. Thank you, Daddy says. Doreen nods and heads back to the countrywide travel bus. She pauses before she climbs the stairs. Good luck to you all, she calls. Okay, let's get going then. Daddy slings the duffel bag over one shoulder and grabs the heaviest of the two suitcases. Mama sets Dylan down. She threads his arms through the loops of his sponge bag, Spongebob backpack. Time to be a big boy now, she says, handing him his stuffed shark. I pull my backpack on, and I take Dylan's hand. Let's go, Toto, I say. I hold onto his little hand, like a lifeline to normal. We walk and walk and walk and walk. After a while, Dylan whines. I'm tired, Daddy. When will we be there? I see Daddy's shoulders tense under his th thin flannel shirt. Let's play I Spy, I say. Before Dylan can complain any more, I say... I spy, with my own little eye, something yellow and black with big wheels. School bus, he yips, pointing at the bus, waiting at the red light. I squeeze his hand. Good job. Your turn. Dylan looks around. He smiles and gives a little hop. I spy, with my own little eye, something small and brown and furry. Sure enough, there on the corner of the intersection stands a woman in a flowery dress holding up a cardboard sign. The sign says, Hungry, please help. Beside her sits a little brown dog with white paws and a white patch on his head. The dog looks straight at me and wags its stubby tail. The woman looks desperate, but the dog looks happy as can be. I wish I could be like that little dog. Dylan tugs on my hand. Did you guess? I tear my eyes away from the woman and dog. Yeah, I said hurrying to catch up with Daddy. A dog. We keep playing as we follow Daddy through the city. I'm going to pause there for a second. Who do you think that little dog was? I think so. And where do you think they're going? I kind of gave it away in, in my little preview, but... Yeah. There's a reason why the, the parents are so stressed out, I think. We keep playing as we follow Daddy through the city. I spy something big and green and overflowing with garbage. Dylan spies something silver and square with four small wheels. An abandoned shopping cart. Someone sleeps next to it right on the sidewalk. I pull Dylan closer and hurry past. Daddy, I'm hungry, Dylan complains. We're almost there, buddy, Daddy says again. Behind me, I hear Mama sigh. Finally, Daddy stops. 
He looks down at the paper, then up at the sign. This must be it, he says, in a voice so low I can barely hear him. I look up at the sign. My heart drops fast, like at the very top of a roller coaster. Mama comes up and stands beside me. She takes my empty hand. We both stand there, looking up at the sign, like it's in some kind of foreign language. What does it say? Dylan asks. I look over at Mama. This can't be right, can it? Reading my thoughts, she looks away and blinks fast. I take a gulp of air. It says, 60, it says six, Sixth West Emergency Shelter. Dylan frowns and shifts his toy shark in his arms. What's emergency shelter? I want to say it's a place where people go who don't have a home. But I don't. Mama runs her hand over Dylan's curly hair, sticking up all kinds of ways. It's like a hotel, honey. She looks at me and puts her hand on my shoulder. It'll be fine. But how can it? Every place we've been since we lost our home four months ago, every possibility that didn't work out has made our world feel smaller. I never realized until it was gone how something as normal as hope lights up your world. So, I'm going to stop there. Am I? Or shall I read one more baby? I think I'm going to read one more chapter of baby. One more little bit. Okay. And then we'll stop. I'm kind of wanting to know what's, what's going on with Jewel and baby. Chapter 6, Good Folks, Bad Folks. Baby stands at their corner with Jewel, watching the traffic go one way, then the other, stop and go, then stop again. Where are they going? He wonders. He remembers riding in cars, on a bus, outside, in the wide open world. In the wide open world is better. Inside some cars, a thump, thump, thump makes the inside of baby's ears beat like a drum. Inside some cars, children press their faces, sticky fingers, hands and noses against the car windows. They point, stare and wave. Baby yips hello, wags his bit of a tail. Jewel holds up her sign. The wind tugs at the hem of her dress. So it is them that Piper saw. Please help, she calls. Please help me and baby. At the sound of his name, the little dog leaps and twirls on his back legs like leaves in the wind. A window rolls down. An arm sticks out, holding a dollar, maybe two. Bless you, Jewel says. Baby yips his thanks and spins in a circle of delight. Another window rolls down. Another hand holds out hope. The light blinks. The cars go. Baby watches a crow fly overhead with something in its beak. Bomb, someone yells from a yellow car. Get a job, someone yells from a black car. Jewel wipes at her face. Her smell of fear and despair makes baby want to run, run, run after those cars and bite them. A woman threads her way through the waiting traffic and steps onto their corner. She hands Jewel a, de a delicious smelling something wrapped in warm, wrapped up warm and tight. She touches Jewel's shoulder and pats baby on the head with a hand that smells like flowers. Good boy, she says. Good, good boy. Baby sneezes in agreement as the woman with the flower hands walks away. Jewel unwraps the paper. The joyous smell of cheese, butter, meat fills the little dog's nose. Rapture, he barks. Jewel tears the sandwich, puts half on the ground for baby. Remember this baby, Jewel says. Baby cocks his head to one side and listens. There are good folks out there. Some bad folks. But mostly good. Don't ever forget, baby. Mostly good. Baby licks his white paws over and over and over, tasting every last crumb. All right. So I am going to stop there. But if you like um, the sound of this, if you're interested, if you want to know what's going to happen, what's up with Jewel and baby, and what's going to happen with um, Piper and her family, then head over to Hoopla 
um, you can link from our website at imaginefflibraries.org. Um, you'll need your library card number and then uh, you can check out this uh, book on audio or as an ebook. And there's no wait times and no holds, so you can get it right away today. All right, take care. Until next time.